After suffering an Achilles injury during Game 5 of the 2019 NBA Finals, Kevin Durant was out for 552 days. Upon his return, there were a lot of questions on where he would stand as a player. Would he lose the unique agility that allows him to create his own shot at will? Would his defensive ability fall off a cliff? Would he still be able to explode for 40 points on any given night? Not only has Durant answered these questions, he's arguably improved as a player, shattering all expectations and quickly emerging as a serious candidate to win the MVP award. His scoring is as good as ever, he's making the best reads of his career as a passer, and he's oftentimes serving as the primary rim protector on one of the best defensive teams in the league. So now, the question has to be asked, is Kevin Durant the best player in the NBA? Over the past decade or so, Kevin Durant has gained a reputation as arguably the best 3-level scorer the game has ever seen, pairing his elite outside shooting with a strong handle and unique agility that allowed him to get to the rim consistently. Recently, he hasn't been attacking the basket nearly as much though, these past two seasons marking career lows in percentage of field goal attempts within 3 feet. This is a common theme among players as they start to age, and usually when we start to see a decline in their overall scoring production, but because of how elite KD's perimeter attack is, he remains one of NBA history's very best scorers. One huge staple of his offensive game is the pull-up jumper, making the game look effortless as he continuously gets to his spots and knocks these down. By his spots, I mean anywhere on the floor where he can see the basket, because he can hit these from well beyond the three-point line while moving towards the middle of the court and on the baseline. His height and absurdly high release point make contesting these shots almost impossible for any defender, and he can hit these over two without a problem. Even when his matchup has the length to bother on the release, they usually aren't quick enough to close the gap. Durant has multiple techniques for creating space, his go-to being the hesitation. He also uses quick changes of direction, keeping his handle loose on purpose when crossing the ball over to cover more ground, and he'll often take these straight into a step back jumper. He's also great at decelerating, which allows him to pull the trigger when going downhill and in transition. These shots are most lethal when coming off a screen. When his man loses even half a step on him, it makes all the difference. For this reason, he completely torches drop coverages, forcing opposing bigs to step out onto the perimeter and opening up opportunities as a playmaker. You'll frequently see teams try to hedge on these screens, and Durant has developed some nice playmaking counters to this type of coverage. He has a quick shovel bounce pass he'll often use when moving to his left, and this is his go-to delivery on the pick and pop. Sometimes the opening isn't there right away, so he'll be a bit more patient to set up the roller with a nice hook pass. There's some occasional manipulation on these as well, leveraging the threat of his pull-up jumper to make the big commit before sending it to a run at the rim. He's also gotten more comfortable lobbing it over the top when the recovery is late, especially when going against smaller defenders. Another coverage team send at Durant is a blitz, and he's good at quickly getting the ball to the screener to create that 4 on 3 advantage. His perimeter initiation isn't just a product of the pick and roll though, anytime he's in attack mode, he's creating some type of opening for his team. His hard drives to the middle of the floor force the defense to collapse and as a result create open 3 pointers, and sometimes he'll even find a higher leverage assist on these with a laydown. He's got a pretty decent eye for cutters, and he's gotten much better at operating in tight windows to create shots at the rim. Sometimes he's even making plays by just making a simple pass out of a double team, but like I said, he does occasionally make a high level read. While he's more than capable of initiating good offense from the perimeter himself, he's also not taking away anything from strong playmakers because of how good he is off the ball. He's one of the best movement shooters ever, and this makes him unstoppable coming off pin downs. Any slight miscommunication on the screen leads to an easy jumper, not only in the mid-range area, but from 3 as well. Because of this, defenders will often try to front him, which doesn't really work because he can just finish a lob right over the top. When the screener's man provides any sort of help, he'll use that shovel pass to quickly take advantage of it. Where Durant adds most value off the ball though is as a spot-up shooter, 
Since 2017, he's hit 43.9% of his threes off the catch. His matchup can't really provide much help because of the release point, which makes him a very valuable floor spacer, especially when playing the four. But you also can't overplay him outside because he's great at countering with quick backdoor cuts. The only way to really contest his outside shot is by getting right in his airspace, which is where you'll see him attack the closeout. He might be the best player ever at attacking closeouts, and when a rim protector is already in position, he'll use a quick one or two dribble pull up. Even when there isn't a hard closeout, he's still very quick attacking off the catch, which makes him most dangerous when playing next to another high level advantage creator. You'll see this when coming off handoffs, often bouncing straight into his pull up jumper, or showcasing some more of that playmaking. A subtle part of his off-ball game though, is just knowing how to position himself to get the ball, and this is how he sets up his isolations. With his back to the basket, he can hit the fadeaway turning over either shoulder, and reminiscent of Dirk, he has the one-legged jumper in his arsenal as well. Better hope he misses, because there's no way to contest this. Yet still, he's most dangerous when facing up, most of the time just simply shooting over his man. He'll create a bit more room with some quick jab steps, and he's good at keeping the ball high against smaller defenders to avoid swipes. When he feels he can't comfortably get the ball up and over, he'll go to a one dribble pull up in either direction, and when that's cut off, he can use that hesitation to get to the rim. Because of how lethal that pull up jumper is in isolation, opposing rim protectors usually roam to the baseline as wing defenders cover the nail. This creates a weak side advantage over the defense, and while younger KD couldn't consistently make this pass, he's now more than capable of these cross court finds. While he's not skipping the ball like LeBron James, he clearly recognizes where the opening is and can comfortably get it there in time for a shot. He counters double teams with quick decisions, which can sometimes mean just simply kicking it right back out to the entry passer. It can also mean quickly finding a cutter, diving into that space he created, or some more skip passing. Sometimes he's even creating a play out of nothing because all eyes are on him, taking advantage of unsuspecting off-ball defenders. While he is a phenomenal three-point shooter and can still finish at the rim, you'll notice that most of his attack is still very mid-range oriented, which helps make him one of the game's very best closers. The ability to create a 54% mid-range shot out of thin air while almost never being bothered by contests allows him to take over games with that tighter defensive coverage and makes his scoring very resilient. Close games in the fourth quarter are best defined as high leverage moments by play-by-play -play stats, and according to their data, the Nets are currently plus 24.6 per 100 possessions in those situations with Kevin Durant on the floor. The Nets' offense has been great in these moments, but their defense even better, and that's been the story of this entire season. Brooklyn currently has the fifth best defense in the entire NBA, and Durant has been a key contributor. He most commonly defends spot-up shooters, where he can roam into the paint and protect the rim. That 7-5 wingspan really helps him alter shots at the basket. It's difficult to get the ball over his outstretched arms, and he's great at controlling his body to not give up any easy angles. For the most part, he times his jumps well, so he doesn't really foul much, although he can occasionally bite on an upfake. When he is positioned well, he's a good paint defender, but some of the problems come from not having the quickest processing speed or great awareness. He's occasionally late sliding over, and he'll sometimes try to compensate for that by overhelping, although his length and agility do help him on the recovery. He's great at running shooters off the line this way, easily decelerating to maintain position in front of the ball handler. It's these physical capabilities that make him very switchable, capable of defending most positions without much negative return. He's obviously best against forwards, where he's quick enough laterally to keep up with perimeter creation and uses his length to smother jump shot attempts. He also moves well in a backpedal, which allows him to contain slashers before showcasing that rim protection. He does have some struggles with guards, however. He's not the best at navigating screens, but he is good enough to still get a hand up and contest pull-up jumpers. He's also great at recovering to downhill threats, and he gets the occasional highlight chase down block. He does sometimes get caught with quick changes of direction, but he uses his size well to close the gap and still bother most shots. That size also helps him match up with most bigs, although his lack of mass does mean that brute post scorers can throw him off his spot at times. Still, we've seen him guard 1-5 through five for extended periods of time all season, and over the past few years, which is why the switch all system that Brooklyn has in place brings the most out of him on that end. 
It allows him to freely roam and clog multiple lanes with his length, while never placing him in awkward situations because he has strengths at each position. If I had to estimate, I wouldn't say he's near all defense level, but he's definitely a clear positive, adding value to his team on that end of the floor. He's the best scorer in the game, doing it both on and off the ball and possessing almost every counter imaginable. He leverages that scoring gravity into opportunities for teammates extremely well, making the best reads of his career as a playmaker. He's one of the best closers this game has, and he scales up extremely well next to other high-end talent. That offensive package is enough to make him an MVP level player already, but when you pair that with clear value on the defensive end, you get arguably the best player in the entire NBA. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website, podcast, and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments where you think Kevin Durant ranks in the NBA and where he lands in the MVP conversation. As always, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.